Hi, welcome to Rar Math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on radical functions. In this video, what I want to talk about are the characteristics of radicals that define the domain and range. And what ends up happening is what hap it's different if the root has an even root or an odd root. Okay, so our radical looks like y equals a times the nth root of b times x minus h plus k. This gives us a starting point of hk. All right, to figure out what happens when we have an even root, we're gonna have to look at a and b and see how it affects the graph. Well, we'll start with a is positive. If a is positive, a defines our range. So if it's A is positive, the radical goes upwards. And if B is positive, B is defining X, X also has to go in the positive direction. So if they're both positive, we have a starting point here and we have both of our directions going positive with our starting point of HK. The domain is going to go from H to infinity and our range is going to go from k to infinity. Now k is simple to pull out because it's always the bit that's outside of the radical. For the h, what we really do is we set um, this b times x minus h equal to zero. Because the b is a number, we don't have to worry about that. Basically, x has to equal h. So really what we're doing is we're setting whatever's under that even radical equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero to get our domain. Okay, well, that's what happens if b is positive. If b is negative, that means we have a negative number multiplying to x. What happens there is the y is still going up, our range is still going up, but our x direction is going backwards. So we still have the same starting point of hk. Now the domain, because we're going backwards, is negative infinity to h, and the range is still going up, so it's still k to positive infinity. Okay, that's what happens when a is positive. What about when a is a? What happens when a is negative? Well, if a is negative, the graph points down. So if a is negative, it's pointing down, and b is positive, it's going forward, our graph is going to look like this with our starting point of hk. Our domain is going to be from h to infinity because we're going forward. Our range, because we're going down, is going to be negative infinity to k. And our last area is if they're both negative, so they're both going in a negative direction, we're going down and back. We start here, we go this way with our starting point of hk. Our domain is negative infinity to h. Our range is negative infinity to k. All right, so all of that information is how we determine the domain and range when the root is even. Now I have many other videos where I actually have equations and I show how to do it and it becomes simple. The A tells you positive, negative. The K is just given to you. These bookends are really easy to pick out for the range. And like I said, for the inside, we just set it greater than or equal to zero. So the actual computation is quicker than this maybe makes it look. But this is explaining why. The A determines the up down, the B determines the left right. All right, so that's all the even root. Look at all the space we have for the odd root. What happens if it's odd? So I should put here that this is even. So it's a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root. Here we're gonna set n equal to odd. That means we have a cube root, a fifth root, a seventh root. Also works for a first root for the domain and range. Well, the thing is, an odd radical looks like this, or it looks like this. Those are our two options. And if what we're doing is trying to figure out what happens with the domain and range, you might notice that in both graphs, there are arrows pointing left and right, which means the domain is all real. Now you can do 
interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. You can do double bar R. You could say all real. You have these options over here. I could have said that X is greater than or equal to H and Y is greater than or equal to K. Um, X is greater than or equal to H and Y is less than or equal to K and so on. Um, I just think interval notation is easier to read. Though when I do the calculations, I usually leave them as an inequality. So you have to figure out what you need to do for the assignment you're doing. Okay, so back to the odd, left and right, all real. You might also notice that this is forever continuing up and this is forever continuing down, which means the range is also all real. So what is odd about an odd radical? It's oddly easy because the domain and range is just all real. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.